Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I would make a little video talking about all of the different creative hobbies that I've had in my life, why I liked them, why I stopped doing them, how I maybe circled around and came back to them. I'm just gonna give you the insight that I have. I'm gonna be telling y'all my story. Let's start way back at the beginning, like when I was like seven. I'm gonna try to go kind of chronologically. So I guess the first real hobby that I had was songwriting. I wrote songs from ages seven to 10 or 11. And then once I got to be 10 or 11, I kind of dropped off and stopped doing it so much. I have a whole song journal at home though, just filled with all sorts of songs. And I kind of feel like the reason I stopped writing songs was because the more music that I, that I listened to, the harder it was for me to come up with something original. Like this is actually one example of something that I feel like, like gets harder as you get older. I don't want to say I lost the creativity as I got older, but I kind of just feel like <sighs> I'm exposed to so much music every day of my life that it's just it's harder for me to come up with something original and maybe I put more pressure on myself to come up with something good than I did when I was younger and I didn't care whether or not it was good. I will say though it's such a good feeling when you actually get a song written just the way you had it in your head. Lyrics like saying something exactly the way you want it to say it is such a satisfying feeling. Since being a child though um, I have attempted to write a few songs here and there. I've written maybe four or five songs since being like in the last like 10 years since being older. They're better. They're definitely a lot better than they were when I was younger, but it is very rare when I feel like I have enough inspiration to write a whole song. I actually wrote one last week. So if you're wondering how I'm doing, that is how I'm doing. We had so much to say. <laughs> it's also kind of hard for me to keep up with my changing music taste. I don't know how to write the types of songs that I like to listen to. Cause when I was younger and this all came very easy to me, I was kind of writing pop songs, but I don't really like pop music anymore. And I don't know how to write like alternative music. I don't know how to do that. So kind of along the same vein of that, I have also tried in my life to learn how to play various instruments. And this is really the one hobby that I feel kind of isn't for me. I feel like a lot of these hobbies I've gotten pretty good at, but playing instruments, I never, I never really mastered any instruments. So I tried to learn how to play guitar when I was about 10. I took guitar lessons for maybe a year and y'all guitar, guitar definitely was not the instrument for me because of my hyperhidrosis, because of how much my hands sweat. It was like really, really hard. So that was just probably never gonna work out. I wasn't a fan of the whole, it's not gonna stop hurting until you play so often that you get calluses kind of thing. I wasn't really here for that. Honestly, I wonder, I have a theory that it takes you longer to get calluses when your hands are moist. Oh, I hate that word. Okay. I have a theory that it takes longer to get calluses when your hands are wet all the time. Don't know if that's true, but that's my theory. Never really liked guitar a whole lot, or maybe I liked it at the time, but I kind of gave up on it after like a year or two. That being said, guitar gave me the basic knowledge of music that I needed to start teaching myself how to play the keyboard. The keyboard I like a lot better. It's easier to play with my hands sweating. It's just, it's easier in my head to make sense out of. I can see everything. It just, it clicked with me a little bit more. And I, to this day, am still, sort of in the process of teaching myself how to play keyboard because I got my keyboard when I was young and I learned how to play a few songs. But then I took a break. I came back a couple, maybe a year or two later. I decided, no, this is gonna be the time. This is gonna be the time I'm actually gonna learn a little bit more. I learned a bunch of the chords, learned maybe part of another song and then took a break again and here I am like, I think it was like last summer, I went through another keyboard phase where I was like, no, I'm gonna do it this time. I'm gonna really do it this time. And I learned a bunch of the scales and then some more chords and then started trying to learn a song by 
reading the sheet music, which I know how to read from choir, kind of, and probably from guitar lessons. So keyboard is something that I go through phases of. I, I play it for a little bit and then I get tired of it, but I always come back to it. The great thing though about learning how to play an instrument is that it is a skill. Like I'm not really learning how to play it for fun. I almost just want to learn how to play it so I can like use it when I need to more specifically so that I can use it when I'm writing songs now hearing myself put that logic together out loud is kind of funny because I literally just said I never write songs anymore but yeah that really is one of the main reasons that I continue trying to learn how to play the keyboard is because I want to know how to do it next time a song comes to me and then the third instrument that I learned how to play which is probably my favorite but that I am going through a huge I have no inspiration right now to play this instrument is the cajon. If you don't know what a cajon is, it's like one of those little boxes that you sit on and you hit it and it makes drum sounds. You know, I posted a few cajon covers on my channel actually. To be completely honest, I want to learn how to play the drums so bad. I've always wanted to learn how to play the drums. Even though I, I rarely play my cajon nowadays, I haven't played it in several months. Even though I rarely play it, I feel like when I'm listening to music, I'm still not sounding out the beats, but you know what I'm saying. Like I'm still still thinking like, okay, if I were to play this on a cajon, this is how I would play it. I do that in the back of my head all the time. So moral of the story, instruments are just not something I've been able to stick with, but they are something that I'm glad I kind of have knowledge in because I feel like it makes me appreciate music more. And I feel like it's a skill that comes in handy whenever I'm writing a song or whenever I, for instance, am wanting to learn a song for the talent show with my friend Joanna. We did that in high school. We did like two talent shows together. Or I don't know, I feel like doing a cover of something. Like I really, really, really like having that knowledge in my head, even though I don't use it very often at all. So that is my complicated relationship with instruments. I have several more hobbies. I need to speed up talking about this. I think the other ones will be a little bit quicker. Okay, so there's that. I didn't get my cajon till I was like in high school at some point. I wanna go backwards a little bit and talk about nail art. I went through a huge nail art phase where I learned pretty much everything that there is to learn about nail art. I had all of the tools. I got to the point where I could basically draw or design anything that I wanted to on my nails. I was very comfortable with it. And I actually ran a nail art account on Instagram that did like pretty decent. And I posted a lot on it. So if you wanna look through some of my nail art, I'll link the account down below. It's inactive now, I no longer post on it, but it is kind of my portfolio for all of my nail art. This was a very fun hobby for me. I think because I was back to using it as a form of expression, which is something that I couldn't do a lot with instruments. I never got good enough at instruments to, to like write my own stuff on there really, except for just background music for songs I wrote. But nail art is something that I got to the point where I could express whatever I wanted on my nails and it felt really good. Now the reason I stopped doing it is I got to the point where I was putting so much pressure on myself to post stuff on my nail account on Instagram that it, it wasn't fun anymore. I was doing it almost more like a job. And so I finally decided to post hashtag face behind the nails on my Instagram account. I can't remember if I actually wrote in the description of that, that I'm going to shut down the nail account or if that was just like me coming to terms with the fact that, okay, I'm walking out the door, but that is essentially what I did. I thought I was just going to take a short break from nail art, but to be honest, I really never came back to it. I, I straight up burnt myself out of it and never came back to it. I have so much nail polish though, so much nail polish. Recently, I've actually gotten back into painting my nails a little bit. Now I feel like makeup, there, there's a few similarities here between nail art and makeup because they're both skills that once I felt like I mastered them, I sort of lost inspiration to continue them. Makeup is different because I still wear makeup obviously a lot and every time I do my makeup I still love doing it just as much as I did back in the day. So I still I still continue to do makeup for sure. But once I got to the point where I felt like, okay, I can do anything I want with my makeup now. I know how to do everything. And there, there didn't seem to be much more room for improvement. That sounds 
so cocky because there's always room for improvement. But you know what I'm saying. Once I got to the point where, okay, I've watched all of the YouTube videos. I know all of the skills. What am I watching these for anymore? It's pointless. I stopped watching YouTube tutorials, which is how I learned how to do my makeup because I knew how to do all of them. And I really, really hate to admit this guys, but like I just haven't been using it as a creative outlet like I used to. And that makes me really, really sad. Like I'm not, I've not come to terms with that at all. I still love doing my makeup every time I do it, but it's no longer colorful eyeshadow every single day the way it used to be. Literally in high school, I wore a different color smoky eye every day. I almost never wore brown eyeshadow. I don't really know like why I'm feeling this way about makeup. I'm gonna try to not take it super seriously though because I'm sure I'll start using it more creatively at some point again. I'm sure it'll cycle back around just like all of these hobbies do. I'm gonna blame it on the fact that I'm just getting my creativity out in other ways and that's fine and that's healthy and that's fine and that's okay. Currently, the way that I have been getting out my creativity is through dance. You guys know this because I suddenly out of the blue started posting dance videos. That is currently like my favorite hobby to do besides YouTube. It's something that I used to do when I was younger, like a lot younger, probably like elementary school and middle school. And then I stopped doing until last semester. So I took a real long break from dance, but now I'm back to it. Oh, it's so fun for me. I think the reason I love it so much is because literally it's just because I love music so much and I've tried creating music. I still try sometimes, but more than anything, I just like to listen to music and appreciate music and talk about music. And now I have discovered dance as another way to express how passionately I feel about music because now I can listen to a song and I can express, I can show the world exactly how I feel about that song through my dancing. And sometimes it's a good way just to express like how I'm feeling about life, like not just about the song. Sometimes I pick a song that describes how I'm feeling about life and then that's a way to express how I'm feeling about life. Oh my gosh, I just said that like five times. Really the only other hobby, the only other creative hobby that I've taken up in my lifetime is video making. And you know this because you're watching a video of mine right now, but what you might not know is how long I've been doing this for because I have basically been making videos since I was old enough to hold a camera. If you go through the home footage, I'm vlogging at age eight, nine, 10, I don't know. I had a YouTube channel. I started my first YouTube channel, YouTube channel in middle school. It has been the one hobby that has never died for me. <laughs> that I just consistently liked. And I think one of the reasons I like it so much is because I don't feel like it's something you can master. Even if I mastered all of the editing techniques, which I'm not there yet, and I think that's a huge motivation for me to keep making videos, each video is so different that it's like, you can't just master making videos in general. So I think that's honestly why I like it so much is that I'm constantly challenging myself and I make YouTube videos about all of the other hobbies that I love so much. I make YouTube videos about dancing and about makeup and about cajon. And I used to, if you scroll way back on my channel, I even have some videos about nail art. So I feel like YouTube is the perfect, perfect conglomerate of all of the hobbies that I've ever loved. And it's something that I don't see myself ever getting tired of. That being said, even if I do get tired of it, I know I'll come back to it because I like to try different things, but I always come back to where I started. And even though it does feel like I have quit a lot of different hobbies in my life, and that does make me really sad, and I'm currently honestly still trying to accept the fact that I don't want to wear colorful eyeshadow every day. I know I can't even believe I'm saying it. I have to remind myself that all that this stuff is is just an expression of me and I am the same no matter what. Even though I'm I'm changing the ways I express myself, all of the creativity is from my brain. You know, I don't have to be sad about moving on to different hobbies. Yeah, so that was 
honestly a therapy session for myself talking about all of that but it's something that i've been thinking a lot about lately because i've been very very inspired lately we'll say that i've been reaching for old hobbies new hobbies so yeah it's just something i've been thinking about and i wanted to talk to you guys about i have no idea what to title this video leave me a comment down below i would love to talk to you guys i feel like i'm just talking to myself in here right now and subscribe for a new video every single saturday i want to have you back here if you want to keep updated on my life i would love to keep you updated just click that subscribe button and i will see you guys soon with another video bye